Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, according to when you end up watching this. I have Nicole Butler above me now. I'm getting ready to start this up. It is 9.55 when I'm actually doing this on a Sunday morning. Uh, we are going to be reading out of Psalm 51 today. And as I play this music here and she sings a song, there's going to be a small break in there. And then it's going to uh, go ahead and go into Joyce and Evan Rubia as they sing worship of the Lord. Uh, and then after those songs are over with, I will be back on here to preach the word of God out of Psalm 51. So if we could, let us just take this moment to prepare ourselves to worship and then to hear God's word.
Though the sails are torn much Nicole Butler and thank you for joining us this morning for our time of worship. I want to give you this brief brief reminder of easytithe.com backslash hgbc or as an offering that you can give you can send it directly to the church through a check. 2 Corinthians 9 7 and 8 read you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure For God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. May you take this moment as we prepare to worship God to decide what God is calling you to give, either through easytithe.com backslash HGBC or a check directly to the church. May we now worship God with the help of of Evan and Joyce Rubia.
Visions of rapture now burst in our sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is I am so, so thankful that you made the decision to join us this morning in spite of the fact that it's raining, our hair is all messed up, and we don't know how to make it through a day with it raining. But I know this, God is still God. Whether it's here in Kentucky or it's all the way in the Philippines where I have the honor of knowing many, many people over there and they're going through the same kind of situation that we are going through. And I am so thankful for... Uh, Nicole, I'm so thankful for Evan and Joyce Rubia and their songs. At the end, uh, I have a song by Annabelle Whitledge that we're going to play. Uh, and as we look to today, I think it's important to remember last week, uh, just for a quick moment. But not only remember last week, but also remember what our year is about. You know, at the beginning of 2020 for Henderson General Baptist Church, we were talking about the ideal of adopted together to do together what we cannot do alone uh, and, and realizing that here I stand in an empty church building, but the church is here with us. So we understand that we have been adopted together. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, it reads this. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. This morning, as you ponder upon what is your part? 
What is it that you can do for the kingdom of God that goes beyond these walls? And how we live our life is important because, see, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, it reads, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family and by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. This morning, I stand before you, and, and as some people may not know, I didn't really know what this verse meant until I got to adopt my first child in Bradley. And I think that I that I had Mitchell and Caitlin and then Bradley came along and I understand all the more how excited I was that when grace comes along into my life and realize, wait a minute, there is no difference between A and B in this family. We are all together in this, that when Whitney and Courtney came into our lives, that that there's no difference between us. And it brought God great pleasure. This great pleasure is important. Here at Henderson General Baptist Church, you're always going to see this logo uh, just about on every single picture that we do. We've got a cross outside the church, and basically what it means for me, this symbol, this logo, is that Jesus is at the center of everything we do. If, if Jesus isn't the center, and it's not going to be Jesus at the center of our how, Jesus at the center of our what, Jesus at the center of our why and hows, then it doesn't do. So for us, as we continue to honor and glorify God and we get started into more, to, to this sermon this morning, I ask you this question, will there be anyone in heaven because of me? So you have to ask yourself that question. If you're going to be a part of the body of God, it's not just listening to one message here or there and just kind of going about it. It's about what we can do together that we can't do alone. So I look at it and one of my greatest, uh, one of my greatest pleas in life is missions. And I look and I see what Evan and Joyce and everybody in, in the Philippines is going through and realizing, wait a minute, we're in this together. And I want somebody in heaven because of me. So as we look at this and we think about Last week, we talked about the idea of axing anxiety, and I gave you a challenge to give them away and to read that scripture every day, to trust God and to read that scripture every day, to, to know that God is with you no matter what, and to read those scriptures every day, to put God first and read those scriptures, be thankful and pray. Put God first. Read this every day. See, for us in this moment, these challenges are important because today I want to talk about restoration. And I think about restoration and I think about this particular vehicle. Uh, some of you probably know uh, somebody by the name of Elmer and Bertie Chancellor. And this was their car back in the day and, and this was... This was their car when they were uh, a few years back. Here's another car of theirs that, that a different color and different backdrop. And this ideal of restoration is important to me because I see someone like them and, and these cars. And, and I think about what happens. And in our minds, we think about restoration as something that I, I, I know uh, somebody right now who's kind of restoring on their house. They're, they're doing some stuff at their house. They're working on it. And, and, and in a sense, the whole idea of restoration is to raise the value of what you're restoring. Otherwise, why would you waste your time to restore it? Uh, in this picture here, and I'm not sure how well it's showing up, but this restoration, it says this restoration area is to stay off of it because for this land, you can't restore it if people are walking on it. But I think about a vehicle like this. And I think about whenever I turn on the TV and, and just watch some series here recently about taking old cars and they, they restore them. And, and I look and sometimes you'll see these guys, these American pickers, these other junk collectors, and they'll, they'll find these things. And I look at them and I go, wow, that's a piece of junk. 
it, what would I do with this piece of junk? Even right there, what would I do with it? I wouldn't do nothing with it. And yet other people would look at that vehicle right there and go, I'll give you $20,000 for that. And I go, what? Why would you give $20,000? And then what do they do? They restore it. And then they turn around and sell it for like a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I think about people who go diving after lost treasures. And I think about the idea that they go into these abandoned, broken down shipwrecks and they find stuff. And in the wrong hands, a coin that's been cleaned improperly loses its value. See, for these people here who are searching for stuff in the right person's abilities to be able to fix up a car, to be able to do things, to restore it to its pristine value and to realize they're not going to be making these anymore. And to realize that they're not going to make any more and they restored, it brings more value. You find the right shipwreck and it restored to a certain point, the value goes way up. When I think about this, what causes us to need to be restored? See, in this restoration idea, there's this idea that we're broken, but for some people, they don't look at themselves as broken. They say, hey, I'm good. I'm smart. I'm kind. I do good things. I'm working. I'm not bothering anybody. So what is there to be restored? So for some of us, we think everything is fine. I mean, think about it. In your house, there's probably that door that you've been planning on greasing up a little bit because it squeaks a lot, right? I had a door like that, and at one point I was taking the, the WD-40 or whatever the stuff was I was going to use, and I was going to get that to where it wouldn't squeak, and I went to do it, and I was like, wait a minute, this is the back door. I think I want that door to squeak. I don't want to make sure nobody comes in or goes out without me knowing about it. So in our mind, there's these squeaky parts of our life that we go, no, 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 I don't, I don't need to be restored, but what is it that really causes us to need to be restored? Is sin. Now, I know when I say the word sin, there's a lot of people that that get disturbed these days and they talk about, no, 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 don't, 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 don't talk about sin. Because when you think about sin, you're saying, not, not you, not you. Listen. Not you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the person next to you. Them. They need to be restored because of their sin. I'm not talking to you directly. Now, if you're by yourself, <laughs> then you need to get a mirror because I guess it is you, but I don't know. I think about it this way. There was a time that uh, Mitchell and Bradley and I were at home by ourselves. It was just the three guys. And let's just be honest about it. As I think about this story and I think about a couple of other stories uh, in my life, they always involve Heather not being there. That should give me the clue into what's going on. But as I, as I think about this, there was this time that I was walking into the mudroom. It's where we come in. That's what we call it, the mudroom. Uh, and, and as I was walking by the mudroom, there was this trash can. And, and our trash can is sitting there. And I looked down and there was something very, very important some paperwork that was my paper. It was important and it was in the trash. So I holler, I said, Bradley, Mitchell, come here. And, and they, they come up in front of me and they're standing there. Mitchell is standing, say, right here. And, and Bradley is standing right here. So they're looking at each other like this and say, I'm, I'm Mitchell at this point and, I, and I'm standing there. And, and Mitchell goes, uh, so, so when Mitchell looks at him, at me, he, and I go, hey, hey guys, who threw this in the trash. Mitchell immediately goes, like that. Not me, it was him. I think about it this way. We're always thinking it's not me. It can't be me. I'm a good person. I'm honest. I'm, I'm kind to people. It can't be me. I think about some years ago when I was in my office at the house and I hear this 
marking sound on the wall. And, and it's just me and Caitlin again, just us two by myself without Heather being there. I walk out of the room, out of the office, and I look, and she has this masterpiece crayon Crayola drawing. And I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. Who did that? See what it was on the wall. The writing was on the wall itself. So I looked at her in, in her hand. It was behind her back like that. See, it was way back there like that. And she goes, I don't know. I said, you who who colored on the wall? Not me. I said, Caitlin, you're the only one. It's just me and you. She goes, I didn't do it. And I said, and, and her left hand's up in the air in front of her. And I go, well, 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 who did it? What's behind your back? She takes her left hand, puts it behind her back, brings her right hand out and said, there's nothing in my hand. Like that. I said, well, what's in your other hand? She brings it up. There's a crayon that matches the exact color of what's on the wall. And I said, did you do that? She goes, I didn't do that. Not you. See, in our life, we don't think it's us. It's not our sin. But the reality is, is in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We try to hide it. We try to mask ourselves. We try to wear a smile when we're, when we're sad. We try to put a frown on if we want to manipulate someone if into to doing what we want. We, we wear anger as a first line of defense. We wear that blank face on our, our, or that blank stare on our face where nobody can see what we're doing so no one can read us. We even try to mask ourselves with God. See, the reality is, is every one of us have sinned. So when I say, how do we need to be restored? Why do we need to be restored? It's because of sin. Think about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect. And then sin entered in. The problem with sin entering in is that we fail to realize that God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still Sinners. See, this word sin that no one wants to use these days is the reality of us. I'm breaking what God knows to be perfect in his sight. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So how do we look at this? What do we look today into our life? I want us to look at a man named David. And this man named David, who is in Psalm chapter 51 of your Bibles, he writes this, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. So I go back to the story of Bradley and Mitchell to this day. I don't know who threw that in the trash. I'm pretty certain it was Mitchell. But they looked to me and because of my unfailing love, which my love is failing in comparison to God, but my love for my children, my compassion, they look to me and they decide, wait a minute, he still loves me. Caitlin drew on that wall, but I still love her. I love her more and more every single day. So David is now looking to God and he's saying, God, because of what I've done, this, this thing that I've done, this sin that I've done, I have fallen short of what you know to be true and good and holy. Lord, because of your unfailing love and because of your compassion, please take these sins away. The only thing worse than having sin in our life is not admitting it. See, he goes on and says, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. There's some people that think that they're reaching out for something more. They've got everything they want. They've done everything they de desire. They, they look and they say something's missing. Something's missing in my life. And, and it's this idea that I look and say, am I really looking to God in this way that says, I have sin in my life. I have fallen short and I continue to fall short. I need you to wash me clean. 
He goes on and says, against you and you alone have I sinned. Now, we understand that David understood that he sinned against more than just God. But the reality is, is oftentimes we apologize to the person or maybe the people, but we just think about God in this sense. Lord, forgive me of my sins. We understand that David had committed many sins from the point of Bathsheba all the way through. And, and we see the things that he did to try to cover up the one sin and it led to another and he continued on and on and on and he realized, God, I'm in need of a savior. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Will you prove, will you be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just? For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Understand that when we see the Garden of Eden, we see that from that point sin entered into the world. And in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that I read before, we understand that the, the wages of sin is death. But God has given us a gift. And oftentimes we even as Christians, we live our life in seclusion not just because we're on quarantine, but we live our life in seclusion because we are sad inside. We have lost the joy of the Lord. And when we lose the joy of the Lord, we fail to look at ourselves and say, wait a minute. From the moment my kids were born, they come out and they're doing all of these things. Why? Because they're bad? No, because they're a human being in need of a savior they're in need of a savior and david goes on and says but you desire honesty from the womb teaching me wisdom even there see from the moment my children were born and the moment they come into my house the moment that they that they leave to go raise their own family we realize that we're all in need of a savior and we need to be restored we need this restoration because some of us are sad and broken down and nobody even knows it. And it's not just those who have never accepted Jesus. It's those who have accepted Jesus, but they don't continue walking in his way. Even you. Yes, even you. Are in need of a savior. See, I think about how much he loves us. And David says, I want you to wash me clean. You know, I think of this story. It's been within the last two years. So that tells you. Uh, but I think I think Heather was with Caitlin uh, in one of her weeks of treatments. And at the house, you know, Whitney and Courtney are, are gone. They're at school and Whitney's uh, moved into her apartment. So it's just me. It is Bradley, Mitchell, and Grace. So it's the four of us. We've been at, at the house all week long. They've been going back and forth to school or whatever. And I get the phone call from Heather, and we're talking, doing our normal thing. And then I get the dreaded husband question from his wife that nobody wants to hear. So it's like 8 o'clock at night, and on the other line, I hear Heather say this word. Hey, Chad, have the kids had their bath today? And I go, bath? You mean shower? She goes, yeah, shower. Have they had their shower? And I said, today? Like, do you mean just today? Are they supposed to take it today? What is today? And she goes, Thursday. I was like, well, how, how often are they supposed to get up a shower? She goes, well, at least every other day at this point. Come on. And I was like, every other day? I said, today's Thursday, right? I think they're getting one tonight. That's what I thought. You're going to get one tonight. See, in my mind, I'm going, wait a minute. They're old enough. They should just do it. But they're not going to do it. They're not going to be old enough yet. They got to be told. Yeah, even me. I have sin that creeps up into my life. And if it goes unchecked, I can start becoming broken down. And as I become broken down, I lose sight of something God wants to give me. And that's his love and joy in and through the circumstances of life. 
So when sin enters into my life and I don't stop and I don't think in my mind, I got to stop this now. I'm going to run into serious, serious trouble. See, I have to be willing to admit I'm dirty before the Savior and I'm in need of repentance to repent, to change of my ways. And this is what David is doing. See, he goes on and and we understand that for some people, you think you're going to find your joy in, in baseball or basketball, sports. Maybe it's in the lake or or swimming. Maybe it's in your job and you think all of that is well until all of a sudden it's not well. And and then you say, wait a minute, I've got all this stuff. Why do you think it is so many millionaires are struggling They got all the money they can spend and they're still not joyful. They're still not happy because some reason we don't think we should look to ourselves and say, wait a minute, God, what am I hiding from you? What am I? What have I seen? What? How am I being separated from you? See, the Bible tells us that David said, purify me from my sins. And I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. In Isaiah chapter one, verse 18, Isaiah writes, come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. In our life today, the other day, uh, my nephew and Grace were outside playing and all of a sudden I hear this. (laughs) And I look out and I go out the window and there's this little spot where we had to, to dig up some dirt and, and it was muddy. And, and I look at them in their mud field and, and, and Connor, my nephew, he's flinging the mud onto the wall and onto the window. I'm like, man, who's going to clean that? So this is the first time Heather's hearing about that. So she hasn't seen it yet. But I'm hoping the rain outside cleaned it. But the reality is, is there's no hope of you being clean without taking and look at yourself and saying, I'm in need of purification. I'm in need of cleansing. And the only one that can do that is God. And he says, oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me now. Let me rejoice this ideal of joy, bringing it back. Have you lost your joy? See, the Bible goes on and says, don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. He wants this guilt to be gone. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Not only does he want to be clean now in the sight of God, he now wants to dedicate his life back to him. See, every time my children mess up, it doesn't mean I kick them out of the house. It doesn't mean that I throw them away. It doesn't mean that I stop being their father. I love them. I want to set it right so they ask for forgiveness. It's the same way that we do it in our life. We have to have this clean heart. Renew me, God, so that way my work is for you. He goes on and says, do not banish me from your presence and don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore To me, the joy of your salvation. See, for some sitting here right now listening to this message, maybe even scrolling past Facebook and you stopped at this very moment of the sermon, you don't have joy like you used to. You wonder why you're so sad and why you're so broken inside, though others don't even know it. Maybe you even continue joking around and laughing. But every time you turn the lights out in your room, it's just you and your eyelids that you see. You feel this heaviness in your heart. And oftentimes what we fail to do is look inwardly and say, is there something I'm not doing, God? Or is there something I've done that I've not taken responsibility for? There's this idea that we think it's okay to live a life that's joyless. But that's not the truth. 
For those who accepted Jesus Christ, and I remember the moment it felt like the Lord had come in and I just got cleaned up on the inside like I was on the outside. And I realized that for a lot of us, we all think we're going to conquer the world. We feel that cleansing when we accept Jesus. And yet inside, we're still broken. And we're in need of restoration. Is there a thing in your life right now that you are thinking about that says, I need to be restored? See, I want to read a passage out of Ephesians. And in Ephesians, it tells us this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. I want you to know this morning, this afternoon, this evening, when you watch this, that if you accept Jesus Christ into your life, You may have been in the past nothing more than a broken down piece of junk. But when Jesus Christ comes into your life and you ask him to restore you, you become a masterpiece in his sight. And I know in this very moment, some of us who have accepted Jesus Christ into our life, we think about who we are, but it's not who we are that matters. It's whose we are that matters. And are you a child of God in this very moment? I promise you the only thing that can stop you from having joy in your life is not the circumstances of this life because they will never give you joy. They can give you happiness. They can give you excitement, but not joy. Joy comes from God. And in this, I look and say, if you've lost the joy of life and you've lost the joy of your salvation, then I wonder, have you truly realized that you are God's masterpiece and maybe you're in need of restoration? That you look and say in this very moment, I have a sin in my life that I need to change. And the only way we can change that sin is to openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you were made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. This morning as I play this song and then I come right back afterwards for a challenge that I want to give you. As I give you the challenge, I give you this moment. I want you to make up your mind. Is there a sin? I want you to to take your time and to close your eyes and maybe, maybe you just go to the Lord in prayer. And as you go to the Lord in prayer, may you find yourself asking God for forgiveness of your sin. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life. And here's the moment that you openly declare If you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life and you want to do that at this very moment, I want you to type on that keyboard. I want to accept Jesus Christ into your life, into my life. And I promise you, if you pray a prayer that asks Jesus into your heart, he will come. So as we take this moment to pray and to reflect and I come right back to you to give you the challenge of the week. May we take this opportunity to pray in the sight of God. Like all I could see was the struggle Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past Bound up in shackles of all my failures How long is this gonna last? 
then you look at this prisoner Say to me, son, stop fighting a fight It's already been won I am redeemed You said Shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I'm redeemed All my life I have been called unworthy Voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God You're not done with me yet I am redeemed You said Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be Because I don't have to be The old man inside of me Cause his day is long that ain't gone Because I've got a new name A new life I'm not the same And a home that will carry me home I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed You set me free Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be Oh God, I'm not who I used to be Jesus, I'm not who I used to be Cause I am And may we take this moment to go to the Lord in prayer and may we accept this challenge this morning. I want you this week to continue to join us on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at 555. And then I want you to read Psalm 51 every day. Psalm 51, I want you to read it every day. And then I want you to read Ephesians chapter 1 tomorrow. Ephesians chapter 2 on Tuesday. Ephesians chapter 3 on Wednesday. I want you to read each chapter of Ephesians going through this week. And I want you to still exercise 25 minutes every day. As we go to the Lord in prayer, may we find ourselves feeling restored because we have admitted any sin in our life to God. And we ask Him to restore the joy of our life. Lord, I thank You for those who have joined in. Lord, I thank you for each singer and the song that they've sung. Lord, I thank you for the ability for us to all be separated, but yet still come together. And Lord, may we do together what we cannot do alone. But Lord, it all starts within our own heart. So I ask you to make us clean. Lord, those sins in our life, may we call them out to you and may we admit them in your presence. 
And may we realize that sometimes joy is lost because we're in need of restoration. Restore us, clean us, purify us, and set us on the path to obedience and to your will and your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may, he, may his face shine upon you in and through your day and week. I will talk to you guys later.